Hey there viewers and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. Got this O2 Ford Explorer Sport Track here. It came in and it needs a couple ball joints. And I thought this would be a good time to bust out Big Nasty here. This is that new Astro 498 shank. Super hard hitting air hammer. It's supposed to be the meanest, baddest, biggest and nastiest thing on the market. Uh, I've had it for about a month now. I've played with it a little bit, but I've been waiting for a, you know, kind of a good job to come in where I could really exercise it because basically everything I've hit with it has popped off in like one little whack. So uh, I thought we could mess around with this and, uh, because it's a new tool and that's fun. We'll get everything kind of hosed down here. And over here on the right side, all we got to change is just this little short arm here uh, because that's what I like it to do. You can actually buy this. Uh, you know on the right side of these explorers and stuff you can buy a whole new arm, but we're just gonna do a little short arm uh, It's got a broken sway bar link here, too. So we'll fix that we put a lower ball joint in it I just want to use the air hammer. I don't care about the ball joint Of course we'll be using our little nano too it's Still hanging in, hanging in there strong All right First bolt to hit with the air hammer, AKA Big Nasty. Let's see what happens. Not bad, not bad. She's pretty crusty and nasty. Came right out. We'll try driving her up here a little bit. We'll see. We'll keep playing. I'm gonna leave that like that. I don't want to pop all the way. Get some of this other stuff out of the way. Get the caliper off here. Whoa. Little nano makes me smile every time I use it. It's gonna be like a little Astro commercial. Got yeah, this little guy. What is this? Eleven twenty-eight. I've been beating this for quite a while. It hasn't broke yet. So I'm pretty happy with that. She's pretty mean too, with that little impact in the air ratchet. Oh, let's see. oh, probably have to undo the speed sensor, axle nut, and then we'll just leave this whole thing right on the tie rod end, set to the side, and should be able to beat out this uh, ball joint or press it out wherever we gotta do. We'll be good to go. Oh man, what a crazy day here. It has been. <laughs> Yet again, the 1822 half inch gun. We were just using the little 3H1. They look the same, but. Ah, okay. We're gonna have to get special music for when we bring out Big Nasty here. Something sweet, some kind of dramatic stuff. That's already, sorry, we just got a little carried away there. Right, so we'll take this uh, cotter pin down here. My typical MO is I don't bother taking the cotter pins out, you know, for changing the ball joint. We'll just get them out of our way. You can't get them out of your way, just beat the socket up on it. We'll see if the uh, little nano's got enough snot to, you know, if you get an impact, just tear it through them, you know. Hey, right. You ain't got to take out the cotter pin. Cotter pin will come out in a couple pieces. So what we'll do now, I'll just throw a little 
throw a little stand under here because we already cut the top ball joint loose. Let's see if we can't just give this a little, little whackaroo on the bottom. Big nasty. Let's see if it comes loose. throw this upper ball joint in we need to the caster adjustment is right there on the end of course this has adjustable upper control arm too so you can adjust the. I don't know why they did it like this but you can adjust the caster with just the control arm or just the lower part of the ball joint so I don't I'm not sure looks like we got a snap ring on there we can take that off get some pliers here we go Players here. We'll see if we can get this snap ring off. Oh, come on. There we go. This big old honky. There we go. Just going to take and throw a, well, let me show you guys here. Just going to throw a tripod under. Neath this because technically the only thing holding this together right now is the shock and we don't want that thing that alone would make a sweet video we really don't want it to happen all right moment of truth will she drive out a ball joint Knocked out my bit, my quick chuck. Let's see. Big Nasty did a good job. There's our ball joint. Took it out like a boss. Now all we gotta do is, uh, you know, weld the new one in. No, I'm just kidding. We'll push it in. So here's our new one. This, this is that new Moog design. I was kind of a little skeptical of this when it first came out. They've got that integrated boot now, so there's no more big boot like what we're used to seeing, which anybody put in a move ball joint knew how difficult it was to put those little things on. So they've got these, these integrated rubber boots now. I've seen this on the past several ball joints I've put in from them. Did some on a Grand Marquis and on a Blazer. Now on this Ford, pretty neat design. Looks kind of funky when you're done because it looks like something's missing, you know, because you see like, this much of the of the stud, you know, sticking out. So you're like, ah, oh, what's the matter with this thing? But so, anyhow, uh, and I don't believe there's any more need to line up. Oh, I take it back. It is. It still has a rating on it. It says this side inboard. So we'll make a little mark on that. Not this side inboard. So there we go. We got a little mark that way when we push it in, white marks in. Good to go. Snap ring on her, and, and that's it. So let me get our press tool.
Well, for the sake of This is really, this is not a setup, folks. I showed this in another video. I bought this a while ago. I uh, bought one of these up. I think I put these in my Amazon store. This <laughs> Astro 7897, it's called that ball joint press kit there that we picked up. So that seems to uh, seems to work pretty good. I've been using it. Um, what did it do with the ball joint? Right under here. So we gotta get uh, the right combo of pushing devices here. That looks good. So we'll pull it through like that. That looks good. Looks good for my house. So we'll use this little combo here. There's probably something in the direction which we'll read if we have to. So we'll get out. That's so good. You guys are going to think I've gone all commercial on you, but I haven't, trust me. Just sometimes when I get uh, get good tools, I like to show them, because you guys like to see them. And uh, to tell you the truth, until I actually got some Astro stuff in my hand, I'm not going to lie, I was pretty skeptical. Probably as a lot of you are. Um, come on. I'm going to get this thing tied up a little bit here. Get some pressure on this. will be okay. I was a little skeptical because I always... I don't know. I don't want to say it. I was kind of judgmental because I never really used their tools and I didn't know anybody else that used them. So I just assumed they probably weren't that good because they're kind of inexpensive tool-wise. Turns out, I've been really putting them to the use. And uh, so far, so good. And I'm pretty tough on things. You guys know that. Let's see what we got here. We gotta use a sledgehammer? We use a sledgehammer. Hold on, hold still. There you go. Let's see if we can push this ball through. Also, in this case, I think Moog makes a uh, oversized ball joint for these, and I think the F-150s. There's a couple oversized ball joints they make. So, like, if you put a if you put a ball joint in and it's all loose in the hole, uh, you know, there's only two ways to fix it. Either you have to get a uh, you know a new control arm, which usually will come with a ball joint, or look and see if they make a uh, an oversized ball joint. In some, in some cases they do, uh, they do make one. And I think, I think for these explorers, they do, these sport tracks, kind of a, kind of a common issue. Um, but otherwise you just gotta change the control ornaments. Now did anybody pay attention? Do we have enough room for that grease fitting? Oh yeah, lots of room. So I'm looking at the other side. Sometimes you can't put grease fittings in because it'll hit the CV shaft. That. So I'll take and put this in. Make it face forward, I guess. That doesn't matter. Just, however, it's going to get greased. There's that one. Okay, with some paperwork. So in case you guys didn't, what do they call it? The pre-installed integral dust booth. But yeah, that's, that's what I was talking about. Old, new. Old, new new so pretty neat i don't know we'll see how long it lasts see if anybody else copies them i've only ever seen uh it must be a moog exclusive let's see hang on get our axle back down here so not too bad went pretty smooth need something to go smooth today 
They're getting marked. They're mopping the floor with me today, these cars are. Jeez. I couldn't catch a break here for a while. Get our axle restarted. caster bolt here. We'll zip and zap that in and I'll make sure that's free and then we'll put it right back where it was as close as we can and I'll show you why because this our old ball joint on this side has a little hook and that bolt goes in here so when it comes up here this bolt over here on this side you can't see because of my poor camera angle allows the caster to be changed on these slots you know positive and negative back and forth by loosening these bolts, these nuts, and then tightening and loosening the screw over here, we either, you know, move our caster positive or negative. If that makes sense. Right there is the set bolt, this little guy right here. That arm goes right in that notch. That allows for our movement. So we'll just take and grab a quick inside measurement. Oh man, what's the matter with my Turn the lock off, you fool. Okay, here we go. 17.4, we'll call it. We're gonna round up. This ain't rocket surgery, so 17.4 millimeters. Somebody write that number down, or we're gonna forget. I'll be honest, that bolt kind of scares me. We better, be, we better put her down on stage stage one. We don't want to hurt anything. I've never used stage one. I don't even know what stage one is. What am I talking about? Let's go stage three. Did it move? Ooh, she got tweet. She's going that way. Ooh, see that? We better give her a we better give her a little panther key back there. Blowing smoke. Pinched. Go back. How much we got sticking through? Oh, we're just about a little bit there. We'll give her one more douche of the good stuff here. Oh, so there it is, kind of a special bolt. You don't want to go snap the head off that, especially being a reduced shank. So we slide her back up there. Give her a little spritz now that we got it moving. That way if we have to make any adjustment, we ain't got to fart around on the line rack. Oh man, everybody all right? That stuff everywhere. Let's see. Let's see if we can see how close we can come by eye. That looks like 17 points, whatever it was to me. 17.4, 17.4. That's the magic number. Let's see. Let's see how old, let's see how the old eye is. I was using my left eye, so if it ain't right then. Oh man, 18.4, one millimeter off. That was pretty close. All right, 17.4, we'll call it. Yep, 17.34. Just like, oh, 17.43. All right, good enough. So it's got a little bit of, a uh, little bit of rust, mostly on this one. Yeah, maybe we can rattle it off a little. Oh, easy camera. Better not use this. 
We'll use this little guy. It's a, uh, who makes it? I think 3M makes this. Uh, I think I actually have this in the Amazon store, maybe. If not, I'll try to put it in there if I remember. Um, it's for cleaning around the wheel studs on a rotor, you know, on a hub before you put the rotor on. Oh man, I think my tool's getting kind of, uh, I've had this thing since I was a baby. That cleans off around the studs. You can see this guy still just a little bit there. Then we use just a regular cookie wheel to clean up the rest of it. chassis stuff the other day too. You touch it went like this and it just pretty much turned to dust. <sighs> I called Move one time because I said, hey, what's the trick for putting these on? He's like, oh, you just slip it on. Man, I've done some of these. They're, these things go on so hard because they got a metal ring in them. By the time you get them on, you break them and then you got to get a new ball joint because you can't put it on with a broken rubber. But that ain't good for nothing. See if we can get her lined up here. Oh man, I'm gonna bust this. Oh yeah, baby. There she goes. Okay. Slipped it on. Man, they're tight though, I tell you. And then you gotta try to keep, well. So it says mount inboard. We're, we're pretty close. We're off just a smidge. Uh, it's no big deal. I think it's just where the grease oozes out so it's not spewing on your brake rotor. I may be completely wrong about that, but anyhow, we got the rubber on. All the way to the end. That's what's important. So spray those down with a little fluid film. And you'll see how this, this little notch here is going to go into that open part of our uh, bolt there. And you can see as we, if we ran that bolt in and out, you know, that naturally it would take this in and out. Hopefully you can understand that. And that changes your caster angle, which is pretty much, you know, the vertical alignment of your ball joints, you know, uh, forward or back. You know, usually we have a more negative caster angle. Uh, on our cars, uh, it allows our steering wheel to return to center, and it gives us, you know, better handling and all that stuff. So, so now. I want to make sure that, uh, that this hole is pretty clean. Slip our new ball joint in. This one is, uh, so it's only got two contact surfaces, this upper one, and then like right here, and then it's tapered. I don't know if you guys can see that. Now this ball joint is tapered on the end. Uh, we just want to make sure that when we go to push it down in, uh, you know, we're not 
causing any any problems. We don't gotta wild this out too much, you know, to clean it out. This one's pretty clean. I'm gonna get a little burr. We'll go in and wild her out a little bit. Get some of the rust. I seen a bunch of crap down on the bottom. So I get loose. There it is. That should be good. You ain't got a driver deep. Just want to tickle the sides. All right. We'll blast the fluid film. Take your bolt, make sure you clean the rust off it. Let's see. Where's my flashlight? Where's my flashlight? Let's see. Let me back up. Is that doing anything? Oh, a little something. Silly. Comes with a new bolt. What am I thinking? Using this old crap. Stuck. Now well, we might use the old crap. What do we got here? We got this. What do I do with the new one? There it is. There, we don't need that. Never reuse the old bolt. I was just going to tell you guys that. So we got the new one. It's like a glove. I was hiding on my tray, I didn't see it. All right. I don't think we can put our grease fitting in here. Started straight here. She looks straight. I think I'm gonna show you guys until I'm done. No way I can lie to you. No, I wouldn't lie to you. There she is. Man, at least one job today. Got to got to hop on the old gravy train, anyways. I just dodged caravan in here earlier today. Or overheating problem. Guy dropped it off last night. I brought it in, fired it up, made sure it's full of coolant, antifreeze all over under the hood. You know, I can tell the thing boiled over. And I got it sitting over here in the other bay, over in the Subaru Bay, it's sitting there idling. It's up to like, I don't know, 170. Let me just tighten this up. It's like at 170, everything's looking good. I used the uh, Oh, I was using my Varus and another truck, so I had my all tell in that. Kicked the fans on and off, fans work, so I'm like, okay, what's going on here? So I hop inside the van. I'm holding this thing at a fast side. Oh, ah, I got the hood open, watching the scan tool, watching the scan tool. So like 180, Josh, he comes over here, he's screaming and yelling. And evidently, I should have looked up because outside of the hood, this thing was spraying like a little stream of coolant, like straight up, and, and it was darn near hitting my furnace, and it's all over my wall. It soaked everything, it soaked everything. It soaked my lights, my locker. The, I had a brand new computer sitting here on the floor, you know, regular shop computer, you know, Windows 7 type computer. And that thing, everything soaked with the antifreeze. What a, what a mess, so that kind of set my pace for this morning. So the moral of that story, if you're sitting inside your car looking at your scan tool, 
look up once in a while. I couldn't believe it. I do now. Me and Mrs. O were out here cleaning up a mess. I got every base full, about 15 cars in the parking lot. Phones ringing, and salesmen stopped in at the same moment. It was just, and it was lunchtime to boot, or darn near lunchtime. So needless to say, I don't even know what's wrong with the car. I just backed it outside and it still sits outside the door there. It sits out there in the, out there in the Bay of Shane. So, still gotta bring it back in. Now I got the mess cleaned up, figure out what the heck happened. Or it's happening. It's gotta have a hose leaking or something that was sprayed because I mean, this thing was like Old Faithful. It's everywhere, it's everywhere. So you know what I said? Where's your problem? Probably the worst thing that happened to me. It won't be the worst thing that happened to me. But I'm just glad like my bears or someone's sitting there. Right? Right. off here. Oh, that breaks it nice and smooth. Alright, fantastic. Now, I guess we just gotta torque down our action right? Where that one? Right here. Grab a torque spec on that. Make sure everything else is torqued to spec. Give her a little shot of grease. Swap out our uh, sway bar links here. Go get her lined up. Piece of cake. Jeez. This thing must take a lot of grease. All right, just start to move the boot now, so we'll leave that one there. That's one, I don't know. These can't take very much. No, see, it's starting to move the boot there, so. Uh, yeah, and I think I just proved the theory why it says mount this side inboard. You can see, that's where a little bit of the grease oozes out the back. Sway bar link on this side. I'm gonna do them both uh, because that's easier. Uh, the sway bar links are pain in the neck to take off, uh, just in general. So I'm just gonna use a cutoff wheel tip that I just use the torch, but I think for uh, for this sake here, we use a cutoff wheel because uh, it's easier to get to. I want to just chop these off and, and pop our new ones on. So we use this little guy here, which oddly enough is also an Astro. I have no idea what model number it is, but that's kind of what it looks like. Four inch, straight cut, adjustable guard if you choose to keep the guard on. The only thing I would say about this, it takes a tremendous amount of air to run it, so keep that in mind. What's up, 
Mrs. O? Ray's on the phone. Ray? Ray. Oh, got it. Tell me just a moment, we're ready to know some drama here. Got it. Piece of cake. Because I was cutting through the washer and everything else the first go around. Second time I just moved up and went through the bushing and stuff. Right back. I gotta talk to a guy named Ray. Bush is really plastic. So that's what I did. I just cut through it that time. The first time though, like I said, I couldn't see real good. I was actually trying to saw through. I was gonna cut the head of it off, but I ended up, I was like cutting through the washer or something. So I just went up a little higher and knocked it off like that. So now we'll do the other side real quick. Go high this time. like takes the power right out of this thing. Jeez, getting all gummy. Leaving skid marks. Where's my hammer? Burn nothing up in here, are we? So if you guys are using a cutoff wheel like this one or like any other one, um, you gotta be mindful of, of where the sparks are going. Uh, you know, not because you get them in your eye or whatever, but uh, you know, accumulatively they are, you know, hot. You know, when they're hitting your skin and stuff, you know, it doesn't really feel like it. But you know, if you concentrate a you know jet of those sparks all right in one area, you know, like if it's on a CV boot or you know tie rod boot or you know wiring harness or something, they can burn. You know, burn a hole. So. You know, be, be mindful of that. And, and also, if you're using this and you're cutting through like rubber, you know, think about it. You know, it, spread, it sprays that rubber, that hot molten liquid hot magma uh, pretty much everywhere. Uh, you know, and it'll also concentrate that in a, in a single area. So make sure that's not going somewhere and melting on something. Like that. Just thought I'd give you guys that little tip, you know, safety third. 
No, we'll just. It's a lot easier to do two sway bar links at the same time because you're not fighting against the other one. You know, you can do one if you just want to do one, but realistically, these are actually pretty inexpensive. So it's not, usually it's not a matter of fact, but we'll get these up on, we'll get one on. Oops. I'm gonna leave her a little bit loose. We'll get the other side on, then we'll snug them up. Snug these up a bit. We'll do the other side. Whoa, easy. left you hanging. Uh, I was just getting ready to go home, pull this junker in to see where the uh, coolant was leaking and it sprayed all over my wall and got the parts order for that just blazing out of one of the heater hoses uh, that goes to the rear heat. Little plastic Y tees off. It's got a slit in it spraying all over. But uh, yeah the Explorer turned out good. Took it down. Got it lined up. Everything is good. Everybody's happy. I'm happy. You're happy. You got a video customer. She's happy because she got her sport track back in the time that I told her she would have it back in. So that's why I cut the video short, big time constraint here. So had to get that done. Um, I think that's all we can mention. Got to use Big Nasty, this thing was awesome. I'm gonna put these products in the Amazon store as they become available. Uh, of course, you know, it's Astro 4980, I believe is their part number, is gonna be on that. Uh, I got the quick coupler through Gray Pneumatic. Got some bits here through Ajax and Gray Pneumatic. Got some bunch of bits there for it. Kind of spendy for the bits. Uh, there's more 401 bits available than there are 498 shank. But they're bigger, heavier shanks. Supposed to be harder hitting. I don't do tool reviews, but I'm gonna keep on using it and you guys will be the first to know uh, what I think. Um, because I like to see tool reviews where the tool is actually used in a shop instead of, you know, in theory. You know, I like to see what can this thing really do? You know, that's that's how you do a tool review. You get it, you use it, you break it and say, well, would you buy another one? I don't know. Or maybe it never breaks, maybe it lasts forever. That's great, there's good review. So that's it, check us out on Facebook, Google Plus, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that yet and you wanna stay up to date with all the stuff we roll out of here and the videos and diagnosing and parts swapping and whatever else it is that uh, we decide to throw at you. You just never know, so you better subscribe so you can stay up to date. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.